Well, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and sorry I've been on the floor uh, for most of the day in helping to manage for um, our side of the aisle the uh, legislation uh, on the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, but this is an issue of great concern to me and to my constituents in the state of Washington. So I, I wish I was a, able to um, uh, be here in person, but the great thing about the Internet is that I'll be able to uh, watch this hearing and see what everybody said and review it. Um, and that's exactly the point. I'm here to fight for an open Internet and to make sure that I have that right, and then I'm not going to be artificially slowed down or throttled or paid extra because somebody uh, like an ISP, a Verizon or an ATT or a Comcast has decided to now bundle C-SPAN service with something else and make me pay more or just simply think that what we do in Congress is pretty dull and boring and so it's okay to slow it down anyway and maybe not give us as quick of access. So I've heard loud and clear from my um, constituents about this issue and the innovation economy in the uh, Pacific Northwest uh, is not going to be quiet about this issue, I can guarantee you. It is the lifeblood of our economy, and they are going to uh, be concerned about anything that doesn't set about the right rules for transparency and openness to the Internet. I uh, learned recently this week that Starbucks has 15 million active users um, in its iPhone app is doing more than 5 million transactions weekly. Okay, so take one company who prides itself on how fast it can process coffee every morning, and they know you don't really want to have a long line because as soon as you start having a long line, then customers are going to go out the door. But now just think, a transaction that's slowed down even five seconds on that little app because people are coming in and just taking their product and sweeping and saying, okay, we're getting my coffee. Now all of a sudden you slow that down by just five seconds or you say you're going to make those people pay more, you're artificially increasing the price of product. So my constituents wanted us, while I know we debate a lot about movies and you know certain types of content, my constituents wanted me to bring the message that this affects all of commerce. And they also believe that it has a chilling effect on investment. Because if you don't get a rate of return on the investment, if you're basically saying, I'm going to maybe give you slower service in the future, then are you going to invest in your customers or are you going to try to you know, fight this challenge of having slower access? So I know you, Mr. Chairman, are uh, earnest in trying to move this forward and to try to have this discussion, but I would ask the American public you know, if you really are confident about the bundled services that you're getting now, and you think that's really clear and transparent, then, you know, yes, you might like this. But otherwise, I would say to you that everything from data plans to exactly the prohibition on the uh, FCC here would be problematic for the very principles that you are trying to protect in the bill. And uh, while it's good to say on the one hand, you know, we don't want throttling, we want transparency, you know, we, we want all of these things, to me there are three concerns. First, um, it doesn't fix the fast lane problem because there's a big exemption, big enough to drive a truck through, and that's right from my constituents, and I'm happy to provide names and people. So yes, the bill calls for transparency, no blocking, no throttling, but hidden in the middle of the bill are provisions that permit cable companies and telcos to create fast lanes for vaguely defined specialized services. So this leaves the innovators without the kind of guarantee to harness the full power of the internet. Second has to do with the fact that it fails to address the middle mile internet interconnection issue and strips the FCC of any power to address its future. And uh, finally, it jettisons the FCC's existing authority under 706 and takes all the flexibility and discretion away from the FCC, which has to be the policeman on the beat. We do not want this bill to pass and be frozen in time. This is exactly the way the rules are. We need somebody who's going to continue to make sure that innovation happens and that we move forward. So I guess my question is, because I see my time is almost up, is Mr. Kimmelman, do you have a concern? I, I see in you know, your, your comments here about the protections, a long list of protections you are saying should be there for consumers. Do you have concerns that these, uh, I, I just see these commercials all the time on TV on the, 
uh, telcos arguing about this data plan and that data plan, and don't be fooled by this data plan because it doesn't include this. Do you think that without transparency here, we're going to be in the same debate on data plans only as it relates to now this broadband service? Yes, Senator Kent. Well, I agree with all your points. I think that um, uh, 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 it doesn't, it, the, the, the draft bill addresses a number of the important issues that need to be addressed, but it does strip the FCC of forward-looking flexibility or interpretive flexibility as to how to understand these going forward. So um, a fast lane of speed may be, may be um, illegal under this, but I do worry about a data cap for certain usage, um, dropped bits, which is really your example, the Starbucks example. It, it may not be a faster lane, a faster speed, but some people's bits get dropped, others don't. Why? Do an, does an affiliate of an, of an internet service provider get preferred treatment, faster treatment, better treatment, um, better quality of service? Those are all issues that need to be addressed. Um, uh, I, I do believe, just to, to, to uh, on the specialized service, I do want to come back, because the chairman pointed out something very important. This is not new language, this is language that has appeared elsewhere. I think the tricky part for you, if you're legislating, is to understand, well, an, the FCC might do something with an, a specialized service definition, and a number of us might dispute exactly what the words are. Um, under the current regime, we would then have the flexibility to come back and fight that out next week, next month, six months from now, as applied and, as, and interpreted. Um, so if Congress steps in and wants to make a definition like this, just urge you to be very careful um, about exactly what words you pick and, and what flexibility you give the FCC to move forward and understand how that's being used. Uh, Mr. Meisner had some examples before of how it could be used anti-competitively. That would be a legitimate concern. We want an agency to have the authority to look at that. Mr. Chairman, I know you are uh, trying to move legislation and I respect that. Uh, to me, these are very tricky things. And while you can say you have a 65 mile hour speed limit on a highway, but if no one's there enforcing it, uh, pretty soon people are gonna drive a lot faster. And the question is who, who's gonna call the rules of the road here once we pass this legislation? If you just think about it, uh, we, who would have thought that many consumers would be you know, buying coffee with an app? And yet that's a very short period of time. So it's hard to say what's gonna come next. It's very important that we, um, to me, I want to see what the FCC does, and I hope they will protect, truly protect net neutrality and protect an open internet. I thank the chair.